So you could divide your paper into four. You could draw them super largely if you want. If you're on a computer, you could do one per page. It's, it's totally fine. But you wanna make sure you are labeling them because each one is going to be a different value type. <laughs> You want to make sure that when you're doing hatching and cross hatching, you don't you don't do want to use rounded objects. It's just really hard to draw straight lines with rounded objects. Okay, you are you're going to just make yourself upset for that, so don't even bother. The stippling, it doesn't really matter, but what you want to make sure you don't do with stippling is you don't want to have an outline. Meaning, I don't want to draw. Is it okay if I use a mechanical pencil, or is that just a no-no? Uh, they're okay. Mechanical pencils are fine if that's all you have, yeah. So for stippling, you don't want to draw like the outline of a cup like this and then add dots to it because that's not stippling. That's an outline with dots in it. Okay. So the whole drawing has to be stippling and I'll show you that. I like to use pen for stippling only because uh, the pen goes down onto the paper a lot easier and then um, I don't have to press as hard as well. Pen or like a fine tip marker. But if you're using um, computer, then it doesn't matter. You can do whatever you want. So let's start with the shading. Let me lock that so it doesn't change on you. So I'm going to look at my object and I'm just, you want to think about um, perspective, right? So when things are getting further away from you, they are um, get, they get smaller. They're not, they should not get bigger. Okay. And I'm following the angles of my lines to create my banana. Now the key to draw really well is to draw imperfections of things. If you don't draw the imperfections, like the lines that are lumpy, then they don't seem as real to us in real life, okay? So if you are a type of person that really wants to draw super realistic, you need to make sure you're drawing the imperfections of your objects. Okay, now that I have a very light outline of my banana. I'm going to start adding in the value for my banana. Let me see if I can get away with. Seeing if I can show you both at the same time, but I don't think so. So now my banana is yellow and I'm using pencil. So you want to make sure that you have value on the entire object. I also want to draw in my light source. My light source is going this direction. I could just call it the LS, which is my light source. And I want to draw the shape that my um, shadow is casting, right? It comes out a little bit because that's going to create the illusion that it's going upward. And then it goes back. And your shape should roughly be, not exactly, but it should be roughly the, um, the same shape as the object you are drawing, okay? So it's not going to be a square because that's not a square. So you want to make sure that your shadow is a similar shape as your object. Okay, so now I'm going to add some value. So I'm just going to very lightly add value with my pencil to the entire thing. 
and then I can use my finger. Now when you're blending, don't just go blend all crazy. You wanna be very precise with where you're blending in your value. You'll see that I'm following the curve of the banana. I'm not going around in circles. Probably should have used my banana for a different value type, but that's okay. All right, so now I know that this area should be lighter, and I think I made this too dark, but that's okay. I can just make that the lightest area. So now I'm gonna start adding in darker values. By slowly, slowly adding in some value into the shapes. So breaking down this object into shapes rather than um, trying to draw a banana. I'm drawing shapes. So I see like this green shape on the banana. So I'm going to kind of recreate that here. Draw, Like I said, draw some imper imperfections. There's a little dash. Over here is darker, so I'm gonna make this area a little darker. Now I'm not pressing super hard. It's easier to add value than it is to take it away. So I can easily add value to it. You also see that I'm holding my pencil differently. I'm not like holding it like this and drawing. And um, this just makes it so I have different control over the value and I'm not pressing as hard when I hold my pencil a little bit differently. If it feels weird to you, don't do it. Okay, so my shadow here, I wanna darken this. It's actually two shadows in mine, but I'm just gonna do one. Now, when you're drawing in your shadow, you don't want to draw it all the way to the object. You want to have some sort of little um, gap, and that's just to show a spacer. You're gonna, it makes it look a little more believable. So I can darken this. I'm adding value with my pencil, and then I'm blending it with my finger. You can see I got a little messy right here, so you gotta be careful with that. All right, so now I'm gonna start blending in these areas of my banana. I'm not gonna continue to draw the whole thing for you because you're gonna get the idea. I will finish drawing it after I get off the Zoom with you and um, I'll show you a picture of it when I'm done. Now I think I make this area too dark, so I'm gonna erase very lightly a little bit of it here to make it a little bit lighter. Okay, any questions about stippling? That my banana looks strange. I don't know what's wrong with it right here. Any questions about this part, the shading part? Okay. Now for stippling, I'm gonna have, I'm gonna use a pen. I need my purple pen. No. Use my Sharpie. Now you, it's going to be so hard not to want to do the outline of the drawing, but you're not going to just draw with dots. So I'm going to, with my pencil, super, super, super lightly, I'm going to draw the outline super lightly. Otherwise, it's just really not possible. All right. And again, I'm doing this really lightly so that I can erase it later now I'm not going to get the whole thing on here because it's pretty big and that is totally fine mm. a weird 
right angle. Let's see, circle. It's all right. I didn't like that part. Try again. Let's see. Here's my box. My line. All right, so there's the start of my object. So now I'm gonna go in and start, don't just start following your contours that you just drew, okay? You want to use the value, the, the pen to create the dark areas. So I'm just gonna come in here and add stippling to the darkest areas of my object. I would not pick the biggest object for your stippling drawing. And I picked a black object for my stippling drawing, so probably don't do that because it's mostly going to be dark. But if an area, say I want this area to be a little bit lighter, I can create this. Sorry, I'm trying to draw so you guys can see. Create this line here, and then I can make this area darker. And then I'm going to create this line. And I don't want this side to be as dark, so I'm going to put a few less lines. And that's going to separate those two sections. Remember, the more lines you have, or the more dots you have, the um, darker that section is going to look. And it's not about drawing big, giant dots. It's about creating an illusion of value with dots okay because then I can go in once I'm done and erase all that this is the most time consuming hardest one so don't pick your largest darkest thing like I did pick you know a more simple uh, um, object for this one Okay, for hatching and cross hatching, again, I said don't use rounded objects because drawing hatching and cross hatching with rounded objects is really challenging and you're just going to get frustrated. Um, I don't have anything that's not round by me. I don't want to see any drawings of phones, please. They are super, super boring. But I can draw maybe. book okay I'm gonna draw this book my book is upright okay so I have some areas for it to be different I'm gonna use a 2b pencil but if you guys just have one type of pencil it's totally fine you want to make sure when you're doing hatching and cross hatching you have a sharp utensil and not like a dull one so um, using a mechanical pencils are is fine for that okay so here's my book I forgot to do my light source for this one the light source would go this way and my shadow is also stippling okay if it's if this is stippling everything is stippling if this is shading everything is shading this is hatching everything is hatching I'm drawing the gaps right now of the um, the book pages. And then I'm going to come in. So I'm using the ideas of perspective here. I can see how things get smaller and bigger and they're not all exactly 
the same and they're going back to this vanishing point area. It's not a true vanishing point, it's they're going back to that, that section, okay? And then there's some value things happening here. Okay, so for a hat right now, this is just the outline. It's not really showing any value, okay? So this is a great one to use for hatching because it's actually pencil uh, pages or straight lines. So I can just create these straight lines for the illusion of pages and the illusion of value. Okay, these darker areas that's supposed to be gray you want to make sure that when you're doing hatching, these lines are angled back. So when I do the sides here, I don't want them to also angle back because it's going to look like one big object. Sorry, you couldn't see my face that whole time. It's going to be, look like one big object. So you want to make sure everything's different. You want to change the direction of your lines showing a different location or a different part of your object otherwise it's just going to all blend together if all of your hatch lines go into the same direction okay to make this look different i'm going to draw some straight lines straight down to create the pages for my book now i'm doing this super fast and then i need to show the value here so I'm going to draw some diagonal lines kind of far apart. They're, they're not the same as these ones. And I'm going to copy these diagonal lines on the other side. And I'm going to make some of these a little bit darker by bringing them closer together. Maybe that'll make it look like the pages are closer together. And then back here, I want this to be super dark. So I want to draw lines really, 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 really close together. Just in this section. They're at an angle going upward. And I'm going to follow that same angle going all the way back. Okay, and so that one's actually almost done. I just have this one last one to do, and then that's it. Okay, cross hatching is the exact same thing. Do a different object. Maybe I'll do this object. People are leaving on me. And then um, you're going to draw your object. Draw it big. So this is the actual object. Don't draw that same size. Draw as big as you can. The bigger you draw, the easier it is for you to get detail. And it's okay if you can't get the entire object on your paper. As long as I can see part of your object. Close enough. Okay, and now I'm just going to create the illusion of value by making my hatch marks. Remember, the closer together they are, the darker that area is going to look. Now, don't treat this whole thing as one, because if I look at my object, I can see um, that it is different. than that, right? It's a little bit lighter over here, so I don't want to have <clears throat> any hatch marks right there. And here is going to be darker, so I want to make sure that when I do my cross hatching, I make them closer together. So I can see the difference between the two objects. And then I would finish it. And make sure your shadow is the same. It's, it's cross hatching. This should be darker. And then I would cross hatch it like that. 
Okay, you can cross has a small section. You don't have to do the entire thing in, in one. So I can do these little tiny sections and it would be okay. Okay. 